Hey everyone, this is the end game of Conquest on Lunatic difficulty, and our goal here is to finish the map in one turn. There are many setups that can pull this off, but the one I'm presenting here is as flexible as I can make it. It does not require boots, shove, swap, movement plus one, or pass, and it also does not rely on luck with offensive skills like Dragon Fang or Luna. The plan is to rescue a boss killer down to this spot. From here, you need 8 movement to reach Takumi with a melee weapon, or 7 movement if you're attacking with a ranged weapon, so someone in the kill pair usually has to be mounted. You also have to cross the entire map. That requires a rescue chain. Without pass, you also need entrap, which can move this general out of the way. So the list of requirements is this. First, 4 staff users. One of them needs 8 movement and B rank in staves in order to use entrap. You need a second one with at least 7 movement. This person must carry a rescue rod that still has both charges. Then you need another staff wielder with 8 movement, and a fourth one with 9 movement. This requirement can be met with pair up, in which case either partner can qualify. This last staff user has to carry the other rescue rod, which needs just one charge. In total, three out of the four rescue charges are needed. Second, you have to bring the necessary units for a triple refresh from Azura, namely Azura herself, two shelter users, and three other units to do transfers. Third, rally bots. There's room for at least two, so for example, you can bring Rallyman and Laszlo, or Rallyman plus Azana. In my case, Laszlo himself has all the rallies I need, but Kana will stand in for a second rallier. That's 13 deployment slots spoken for. The last three belong to Corin and the two members of the kill team. Remember, one of the two units in that duo needs 7 or 8 movement when paired up, depending on the weapon you're using. That person should start in the bottom left corner of the formation. There is a price to be paid for doing a one turn clear with no offensive procs and no special movement boosters, and that shows up in the stat thresholds. Because of the way Takumi's bold stance skill works, Brave weapons only get 3 hits, so they have to deal 25 damage at a time. That's after Dragon Skin, which has all damage, so your attack power must beat his defense or resistance by 50. Takumi's personal skill boosts his effective defense and resistance to 27 and 25, respectively, so you need 77 physical attack or 75 magical attack with a brave weapon, and you also need 35 speed so you can double. You hit those thresholds by putting together a huge damage stack. There are several ways to do that, and I'll go through each of them in descending order of accessibility. The most convenient option is a Berserker with the Brave Axe and at least 12 points of damage from skills. Usually, you achieve that by combining three skills from the Fighter and Wyvern trees. Strength plus 2, Trample, and Axe Fair. What's nice about this build is that there are many good candidates. Camilla, Effie, Arthur, Charlotte, Percy, Baruka, the list goes on. It's feasible to raise a few of those throughout the game, and most of them can acquire additional damage boosting skills along the way. If you reserve an arm scroll to reach S and Axes and an energy drop or two, your chances of having a viable Takumi killer are very good. The second choice is a Super Sorcerer. There are some alternatives, but usually this is Ophelia. Factoring in her own statue, Ophelia's three best mothers, Elise, Corrin, and Nyx, set her magic cap at 41. Given the number of spirit dusts available in Conquest, Ophelia almost always rams that cap. She has life and death and malefic aura in her innate class set, and she can marry Percy for trample. That's 17 damage from skills. 41 plus 17, plus 5 from S rank and tomes with weapon triangle advantage, 4 from rally magic, 3 from the might of forge lightning, and 2 from a tonic, comes out to 72 attack. Ophelia's mother always has access to the Dark Knight class, and all three of the mothers I mentioned give her at least 5 points of magic in it. Adding that to the 72 we already have, we're at 77. That beats the kill threshold by 2, so you can drop the S tome rank, the forge, the tonic, or 2 points of raw magic. The knock on Ophelia is that if you're not proficient with skill dipping in this game, then picking up life and death can be a big hassle. But once you get past that, she's the most consistent Takumi killer by far. The third option is the Shadow Yato. This works a little differently from Braves. Brave weapons hit three times, dealing half their usual damage because of Dragon Skin. Together, ignoring any rounding issues, that's 1.5 times the usual damage. The Yato has the unique property of piercing Dragon Skin to deal three quarters damage rather than half. 
Therefore, although it strikes just twice, the Yato also deals 1.5 times the usual damage. But where the Brave Sword has 6 might, Shadow Yato has 16. The math works out so that the attack requirement with Yato is 78. The skills you can get with Samurai Talent make this pretty easy to hit, but most Korins have the potential to get there as great knights if they have something like Trample, Elbow Room, Strength Plus 2, Defender, and the plus 7 pair up bonus from Wyvern Lord Gunter. Berserker and Sorcerer have huge advantages in raw attack power compared to other classes, so once we move past the Brave Axe, Lightning, and the Yato, we start relying on bigger and bigger damage stacks. The first example of that, and fourth overall in terms of convenience, is a swordsman other than Korin. Since the Brave Sword is so much weaker than Yato, life and death is basically required, and you still need a few extra skills on top. My Valoria here has both Quick Draw and Odd Shaped for 18 points total from skills. She's not the best candidate for this just because she starts with no sword rank. If Mozu Mother's children like Sophie or Siegbert, they'll have an easier time. For option number 5, you can have someone use the Crescent Bow. Usually, this is the domain of Mozu herself, because her innate class set offers 29 points of damage from skills, but a few of the kids can rival that amount if you get clever with Inheritance. Lancers show up in a very distant 6th place. It's possible to kill Takumi with the Brave Lance, but you're facing S-rank Weapon Triangle disadvantage, and that's a recipe for a bad time. Lastly, we have ninjas or mechanists wielding the soldier's knife. This has the same weapon triangle problem as the Brave Lance, but it also has three less might, and dagger classes have lower strength caps than Paladin or Great Knight do, so killing Takumi with this borders on impossible. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Valoria as my boss killer. I'll pair her up with Siegbert. At B support, Siegbert gives her effectively 7 strength, which is just the right amount. And once they're together, we're ready to go. My apologies. Step one is to rally for our boss killer. Come on, smile for me. Kana's pretending that she has rallies to give. After that, we need to move all three rescue users. They should get at least this close, and they need to wait in a formation where Azura can refresh them all one by one. The simplest way to organize that is to make sure that Azura is singing on three spaces along a diagonal. Every time she gets sheltered, and then someone pulls her to sing again, she'll move down one space and right one space. We need each other. In preparations, do make sure that your shelter users can reach Azura's future positions. You're lucky I'm here! In order to shelter sing again, you have to take away the unit who's paired with Azura. My charm will protect me! Nina, our 7-move rescuer, goes first. If she walks down by the left-hand Oni Chieftain, she can rescue our boss-killing pair from its starting position. The next rescuer, Dwyer, needs slightly more movement than Nina does because he has to go past her. If he takes the rescue rod and uses it now, his target won't end up above him because Nina's in the way. This technique can get the rescuee closer to Takumi than would otherwise be possible, but it makes no difference in this particular setup. Now our high movement rescuer, Shigure, is in position. We still have to move the general out of the way. If you're doing this in an Iron Man run, you'll want perfect accuracy within trap. Each point of magic or skill translates directly into a point of hit, so rally magic would help. Also, Korn is free at the moment, so he can just pair up with Forest. That improves his accuracy by 3. Now there's nothing standing in our way. Let's do this.
We have got this. And our boss killer is in range. Twenty-five times three is a clean kill. For an Iron Man, make sure Takumi can't kill you with vengeance. I can help. This has been my thousand subscriber special, so if you've been a part of that, thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me.